Madam Miss Jotsna uh, Sitling, keynote speaker for this session, to please open the session. Good afternoon. Uh, uh, we have a great uh, dais uh, of Miss Ekta Kapoor, Sri Sudhir Das Ji, Dr. Virendra Raturi Ji, and uh, Murali Ji. Uh, you, you all will be, it's great to have with you all. And yes, uh, this afternoon session, right ha after having food, uh, becomes quite uh, difficult. But we'll try our level best to make this interesting. And uh, what I would like to, uh, uh, in terms of uh, now, uh, whatever deliberation we could hear since yesterday, I was uh, in the previous session, very interesting, very uh, thought provoking. Uh, at the same time, uh, the institutional dynamics of green entrepreneurship for a global ESG effect. This is, uh, I think, uh, I would like to cover the part which uh, I had a very, uh, 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 what I can say is a very, uh, an overall uh, get to know from the other speakers also. But at the same time, uh, we, I think, will present a very diverse uh, view on this one. It will be very good. Now, coming to the analysis part of institutions, processes, systems, and stakeholder participation in it, I would like to look into that. And from uh, the CMA point of view, I think it's very important now, when we talk of green financing, uh, it is very important that we need to uh, look into how uh, we uh, uh, looked in look into the process and systems of operationalizing it on the ground next acha sorry so this is uh, what i would not uh, acha this is i need to be with this only eh? so i would not be uh, very much on uh, this one i'll mostly I'll mostly focus on commons. Uh, this is air, water, biodiversity, climate, trade, and all. I'm not going into what is environmental entrepreneurship, green. Uh, uh, I think it has been discussed much. Now coming to uh, the problem, I think it's very, very urgent for all of us to uh, have, uh, you know, this is problem itself is such that we need to bridge with the people now. It's very, very important for all of us. So uh, the question becomes, you know, when we think people, you know, some in the whole game, can culprits be the custodians? And what about sustaining the initiative? So this is also one big question we need to answer ourselves. And it's time to recognize myriads of uh, innovative uh, action and social and institutional innovation. Just uh, excuse me, just for a while. Is it working? Yes, it's working. Yeah. So now, uh, uh, I think this social innovation is very, very important for all of us to, uh, you know, look into. And what does it need? It needs public disciplining on access and benefit sharing. This is also very important when we talk of commons. So environmental leader with mass following, they have harnessed social goods and services. So they have already proven, basically, through social innovations, localized action, with globalized global sensation like Chipko in the north, Apico in the south, and uh, uh, this one, there is a lot of uh, you know. Uh, I think it happens. Trade off happens in dealing with commons and listening to the public will become inevitable if we want to uh, you know have our investment uh, get impact from the investment done whatever in whichever form so let me huh. 
So the way to involve people in any green initiative, I think it's very, very important. Uh, you know, are we doing a ferry service or uh, we are building the bridge instead that it needs a great amount of social engineering. So this is very, very important now. This is the time we need to focus on here. And they, uh, now a lot of things which we are done, even on CSR or not, it's done on solution driven principle. Yeah, there is a problem and this is the solution. We are giving this solution. Is it going fine with them or not that we do normally the assessments? But it's, I, I think it's the time to focus on solving local problems because we need to attain the uh, local problems with local solutions. Then understand and co-build. This solution is very important to sustain any initiative. At the same time, uh, like, uh, you know, the intellectual people like us, we are very good uh, and we have expertise in hard coding or decision making. But we need to, right now, we need to question ourselves that, you know, you know, is it right thing to do always or we need to hard code information generation and information sharing with the people. This is very important because we have to evolve system with the people. We have to sustain because it's the people who will sustain. The project fund will not sustain. So this is important. For this, I think it's very important to demystify environmental indicators. Everything has to be bottom up, ownership to the public, better compliance and cost reduction happens in audit also. And of course, with better compliance, we'll get the value of the money, which, uh, you know, uh, which will be invested. Now, the main question and the main motto in doing all this is inclusion, diversity and equity. This we need to attain in all these exercises. So uh, designing green projects for local ESG effect, I think is very important. Now I'll come to the, as I so said that, I'll be focusing on systems and processes. So in terms of systems and processes, now it is very important, we need to have an overall outcome and impact timeline. So this is something, uh, you know, uh, most of the project we have seen in environmental projects, it has got long gestations. Lot of behavioral things come, you know, in the transaction. So it's not very easy, it's quite complex. So given that it's very important for us to know the impact and the outcome, and maybe I, I have project for nine years, but my impact is coming only after 20 years then I need to be upfront and telling that my impact will be seen this month, provided this, this, this. You know, assumptions are made between my project finish and the, in the time the impact is created. Lot of, uh, you know, policy processes, lot of uh, other ecosystem factors, they, they will be affecting the impact of the project. Now, uh, what I could see, you know, apart from being a practitioner to now into, you know, mostly into the policy arena and, uh, and looking into <coughs> the, a clear, <coughs> there is in many of the project which is funded, there is not a, not a clear pre-project time and fund. This is very, very important to, to, you know, plan better and prepare pay people first. Then only we'll be able to, you know, take people along in the project process to give desired results. And now monitoring and evaluation, normally it's, you know, you keep a fund for monitoring and evaluation. So, but what about the knowledge management? As I told that, we are very good at, uh, you know, codifying how monitoring and evaluation should be done. But we are not good at codifying how information need to be garnered from our clients, basically, and how it needs to be disseminated to them. You know, you, you challenge them with, or you, you know, they will challenge you. It has to be a two-way learning process. Then only we'll be able to make an impact. So that is important. So knowledge management fund has to be a part of the, all these environmental projects. And along with what I told, pre-project implementation fund up there in second bullet. Now need to keep a clear provision for exit protocol. What I could see was that, you know, before the project finishes off, at least 
uh, if it's a eight year project, at least two year before we should start whatever we have gathered with the people in terms of processes, systems for you know sustainability, it need to be strengthened more to take to to get a you know get a higher leap organized to sustain the project. That is the exit protocol. Uh, any project need to have a very clear exit protocol, and at the same time, uh, you know, being flexible to evolve. Social environmental projects, uh, it's very important because overall project outcome and KPIs, key performance indicator, it's good to set to start a project. But at the same time, it's not a, you know, it's not a codified thing because, you know, things change on and on when we work with the people. So getting that, you know, by midterm, we'll able to be concretely realizing, oh, yes, this is the way to go about it in this project and at the same time in the midterm now budget needs to be again you know reviewed reallocated to get the project organized for the end term and along with you know a, a, a good provision for uh, handling the withdrawal protocol so that is very very important now at the same time now coming to the uh, you know processes systems and how you operationalize in the project uh, you know domain now a collaborative ecosystem we all know it's very important now uh, for to foster a collaborative relationship government with you know lot of government has can either act as a facilitator can act as a regulator can act even as a market participant government has a great role so we know you know as we move how we move on basically Corporate sector, yes, I need not tell because a lot of discussion has gone over the last two days. Civil society organization have major role to play. And there is, you know, th this is the sector which has been largely not used for, uh, you know, developing uh, social sector. So this is very, very important. Social means creating, creating social ambience for environment environment to create its you know multiplier effect that is very important now capital market we all know so we I, I will not go and knowledge institutions play a very important role because uh, you know most of the products and services which environment sector demand is now needs to be you know we have to be always creating what is the upmarket selling point for this basically so a great amount of research has to go on and on with all this initiative if, if especially if we want to take good practices to a better policy arena to get a larger impact organized. So this is uh, one part. So why important to consult people? So I'm just going to all this we all know this is the defeat livelihood framework. Now fifth part has also come intellectual capital. I'm not including that. I'm including say for it's coming under human capital only. So basically what is now, it's not only village, everywhere household. You know the thought basic unit of economic processes household. How they decide will depend, you know how the, uh, the whole ecosystem will develop basically. So when we, you know, when we go for a, with a solution driven principle, what we miss is that, you know, in, throughout the project process, uh, what happens is lot of context change, vulnerability context. There must be shocks, you know, there is seasonality factor like what's happening in Shimla. Trends is climate change is always a trend, you know, it keeps on, and changes keeps on happening basically. So all these affects the capital, all these five type of capital. Now given that all these are always in a flux, they are you know acting, working, whatever. Now government creates policies, institutions and processes that you know keeps on in a flux influencing each other basically. And at the same time it will you know when there is a vulnerability context, government can act whatever in institutions, processes. All these Samaj, Bazaar, Sarkar, they are the institutions in between, yeah? And processes, they, how they act, why they act are these processes. Now people develop their livelihood strategies and outcomes basically. Again this outcome will 
get into this. That's how the people make decision. So if we hear people, we know how to maneuver our project to create an impact. This, you know, otherwise we will not. We will think that whatever we are giving, they are, it's good for them and, you know, we will we'll create a very good report also, but that will not show any impact. So this is very important. Now, why this is very important today in today's context is, normally this social, human, physical and financial capital are transformed by policies, processes and institutions into desirable and undesirable whatever, living style, whatever, you know, livelihoods that ultimately decides sustainability of natural capital. So natural capital for us is very, very important right now. This is what uh, we feel. And now attention to funders also. This is very important. We have to be, you know, funding into transformative impact through green enterprises. So, uh, you know, until and unless I'm coming to the design, deployment, management and measurement of impact part right now. So it is the end user community, you know, when we go and develop, you know, if a social entrepreneur goes, first his job is to listen to the end user and understand the overall project need. It's not necessary that he need to accept that in the first listening part. Secondly, consulting and engaging. Uh, implementation agency with community. So this is very important, community implementation agency, whichever does work, you know, even the funders, whichever, they need to go to influence the design and delivery of intervention. It's very important to let the people, you know, give their feedback for design and delivery of intervention to develop norm for engaging. We have to engage people from the beginning of the project. So that's why it's very important to consult and engage with people. At the same time, now comes the third part towards midterm and all. So co-design and co-produce. Now implementing agency and community need to be consulted and now co-designing and co-producing part comes. Why produce? We are not giving. We are now generating to sustain. So co-production part need to be integrated, ingrained within the project process. Then only it will create impact. So it's equipped, it's, a, uh, it's written NPOs. You can say implementing agency for co-producing products and services of any or any further intervention. Now exit protocol, as I told, community and stakeholder to bring out systemic support into ecosystem player to ecosystem players. Apart from, you know, this, this project uh, primary stakeholders, there are many more stakeholders where I showed in that puncher, you know, in five uh, diagram from within and outside for sustainability. Then only the project will sustain. So this is, you know, keeping sustainability at the crux of thing, how you design the project and how you implement the project and how you involve people across the project process to get the, uh, uh, you know, to get the desired result organized. Now here it's become very important. Normally what happens is that anyone with fund goes to the field and form certain committee and they start performing. It's very important for people, you form it, but it's a, like a gila mitti. They, you know, we have to subject them to storming. It's very important to, you know, you know, battle and settle the ground before you perform. Then only, then comes the community will form their own norm with, you know, implementing agency, with the funders, with whatever. And then they will start performing and it, that performance will be the real performance, otherwise not. So this is how I, I just would like to, uh, now how socially address the environmental problem with people, reflect on my own leadership as a change maker. Now it's all, you know, we all are in a soup basically. Our individual leadership, how we use the resources from moment to moment matters, you know, matters uh, for sustaining the earth basically and recognize leader from uh, civil society organization from go, from the you know many many other uh, organizations like uh, gram panchayat civic bodies obviously market you know you are from marketing but you are the leader here yeah and now sarkar sarkar is person like me the type you know 
and now some example of blow fall effect from public systems. These are my own, uh, so how to go to the, oh, can you please hit, board nahi no? How to click this Dun Valley initiative, it will open up, can anyone do the, if the button is not here. I will just show uh, quickly, uh, you know, the how uh, participatory, uh, participatory action would, uh, you know, lead to sustainable change with few examples, which I have done in the field and, uh, you know, just to uh, uh, briefly, nahi opayega. Pardon? Pardon? Now, I will just tell, huh? here it is an EU funded project where 90 percent of funding grant was uh, from, uh, you, uh, and we had 303 villages in Dune Valley area. We all know Dune Valley was ravaged by limestone quarrying. In 1982, Supreme Court or, uh, uh, you know, had a stricture done that there will not be any mining, but uh, the, uh, you know, it was totally ravaged. So, given that, now, uh, with this funding which came in 1993, we started working and I was there from 95 to 2001. So, main thing here we did was participatory approach to getting the, usme doon valley likha hoga, usko click kar do, bas, link nahi ho par aap, aap lo, haan, ye aap dekhenge, ye, ये इसका कौन सा बटन है उसको दिख ये ये देखेंगे ये पहले इस लेबल पर था जमीन ये इस तरह से रावेज होके रखा है हाँ और क्या है कि जस्ट टू सो बेसिकली एंड ये क्या है कि ये देखेंगे इतने माइलों में ड्रजरी है कि ये बच्चा को कुत्ता के साथ बांध के माइला घास लेने के लिए गई है दिन के टाइम में हाँ सो हाउ यू नो द एनवायरमेंट एफेक्ट्स दी थिंग नाउ नाउ इट्स आई कैन ऑपरेट so this is how, no, no, it's okay now, it's done. So now this is how, uh, uh, this is just, uh, you know, working with the people, we had organized some, uh, uh, the project cost uh, in, uh, this was in 23.7 uh, 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 million euro. So uh, given that, uh, you know, uh, Getting the stake of the people organized is very important. So apart from, although that was area was rubbed, people were poor, but still we had kept the component of Angsadan and Sramdan. This is very important. People need to be included. This will bring, you know, because we don't have money. From morning we are, uh, you know, hearing. And if someone is giving and they are giving at a very high cost, basically, whatever. So we have to stand on our own feet. This is the time. And this is the only way to move forward to handle uh, our environmental problems. So this was, after that, what we did was that, you know, 10 years withdrawal plan. After project has left, but after, even after project leaves, you know, after 10 years from now, how you will handle, there was a concrete plan. And I will show you then, you know, but, you know, lot of social, uh, you know, you need to use a lot of tools uh, to, you know, mobilize people. So it's very, very important uh, this, uh, apart from whatever we have done, I'm just coming to the next. Here, this voluntary eco-restoration work, we had raised an avian called Dala Lagawa Gautai Bachawa. Huh? Because when I went to these villages, it used to be, you know, seen that most of the villagers in many villages, they didn't sleep in their villages. They sleep elsewhere during rainy season because they used to tell us that we will be swept away at night. That was the situation. Then we told them we have got very little fund, but you have to come forward to save your own village, what we should do. So this is how the, you know, the negotiation goes on and on with the people. So given that 10,000 over the period of five years, 10,813 members they planted 3.5, 3.55 eight cutting saplings to treat 358 strategic erosion prone locations 
in the Dun Valley area without a single government penny. Whatever uh, our pay were going, you know, to the project people, that was 5 percent given by, uh, you know, government of Rakhan. So, given that now this project has you innovatively used the local culture, local knowledge and local initiative for eco restoration for self-help, it is very important. Upscaling the exercise for community ownership. Now, I will just, just flip through. See, this is, they used to give run with one mutti mitti, yes, I will devote one day for my village to prevent my, you know, to do plantation. So, this is the oath taking ceremony uh, given by, you know, village to village, 82 villages. So, this is something technical training going on that, you know, whenever we do cutting in the erosion prone area, what, what should be the mota and all these technical trainings are given. So, now it's, it's all, you can see their cultural, why I am telling cultural part is there, you can see, there is Dhol Damao, there is Mandir, you know, every, every village, they used to, on that day, they used to do puja at the top of the mountain area and they used to go for doing plantation in all the strategic ero erosion prone areas. So, this is how people have contributed on their own. So, you can see the type of area people are doing the work, yeah. And even there was a great jubilation after the Sramdan. So, even the community kitchen of that day, they used to pay their own, you know, they used to raise their own fund and uh, do this. Why I am showing all this is, this has a very larger impact in terms of sustaining the project. Say other initiative, you know, a lot of other initiative, I am not going to go into details. Like this one, they used to take uh, 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 trees and get get the uh, that uh, whole you know the uh, stage organized for marriage so given that instead we attack that culture with planting one tree then I ask them you are planting one tree but you are cutting four trees can we take another can we do some you know uh, can we hire the uh, you know that uh, altar where the bride and groom sits uh, from outside so, they brought another structure and they, this prevented uh, cutting trees and especially during weddings and all you can see how they stay in a line na, in Pangat they call. You know these type of thing gets you know immediately transferred in the social uh, you know as a message basically. These are different, I am not going, these are four years plantation, I am just not very. Now, you know, how you address the sustainability part within the project process, I am giving the example. Developing stake of the community and now year wise scaling up of contribution of the stakeholder in large tank, canals and harvesting tank. You know, relatively well of people will take this tank. So, yes, I am paying 38,000 rupees. You know, can we, can you, it all, you know, it is a market that needs to operate with people also. It is a, it's a grand project, but you know, can we raise the own fund to sustain the initiative after the project? That is very, very important. Now, canals, you can see, you know, how the fund has been raised to uh, first uh, one kilometer canal, 25 by 40 uska, so 3.3 lakh was there. So, there, you know, they raised 40, then, you know, there used to be four, six, seven stakeholders. So, 30 to 40,000 they raised and this harvesting tank also. At the same time, the common property like stone, check them and all, we did not raise any because it was in the common land. But afterwards, like 120, 120 rupees, this type of stuff. Basically, even with the grant fund, you know, the market system need to operate on the ground to sustain the project, you know, for developing the stake of the stakeholders to sustain the project, basically. Now, I'll, you know, the result of all this Ramdan and Angsadan, I could show. In 10 villages, this is the fund, the project different components we had, forestry, livestock, horticulture, mine irrigation, agriculture, all directed towards conservation of Dune Valley, Ravage Dune Valley. Huh? Now, you can see in forestry, the maximum investment had gone, okay, livestock, after that, a second was in mine irrigation, you can see, okay, and third one was in soil conservation. Now, in the exit protocol, when we made 10 years plan, so I will just give you how the, they change. The forestry, which had gone largest investment, now they have gained relatively lesser amount. Minor irrigation, they have kept 
so this one, uh, uh, sorry, I think it got just reverted, huh? sorry. This is the first slide, this contribution raised from the different components. Now, no, it's not, uh, that was the investment done and raised contribution. See why market operate, I'm telling that you can see just to, you know, it, it's a great uh, case study basically. So this is the minor irrigation, you know, they have raised maximum amount from minor irrigation, forestry, even though they had done very, you know, spend lot of money less because it was common property resource. Now livestock also, it's a, you know, they have raised quite a good amount of fund. They had raised 23 lakhs when we had spent 2.1 crores out of that, okay. So now you can see the distribution. And now utilization in the re of revolving fund of Gram Resource Management Association means that village committee in sample of 10 villages is the same one. Now how they are spending money in their withdrawal plan for 10 years to come after the project, it is this basically. So, so this is something like they have, you know, spend, they will spend lot of money in forest, looking after forestry because from here they draw the water. Harnessing of water takes from the forest and only harvesting path is minor irrigation. So they have le put lesser amount because this is a private asset they can handle on their own also. And at the same time, institution development, they see how much amount they have put for next 10 years. Yeah. So this is how, you know, we need to be on and on. We need to sense the pulse of the people to get the sustainability agenda organized on the ground. All this with all this, I just wanted to mention that one. So another, just another example, um, I'll, I'm not going to give presentation, but I'll just cite. Another, uh, you just come come back, please. So madam, another one. Madam, so I'll just. Madam, one second, with yes. your permission. Uh, this is Papan Bhai, Padmanavan Chairman. Um, our friends, people have gone to receive the Honorable Minister. So he might come with due respect to everybody, he might come by 4 p.m. He might. So I'll stop here. No, no, no madam, problem. wait now. I'm just uh, announcing. Okay, okay. Not to you, or to uh -huh. all. Uh -huh. So by any chance, by any chance, we'll continue the session. By any chance, minister comes, sir, and the madam also. We will plan accordingly that the thing, so that it should not be embarrassing for you. I should tell in advance, that is why. So you can do some time management, madam, because the three more speakers are there. Fine. So question answer, I have already told them in the beginning. Let us finish the session after that question, so that we will be sharing the email ID and this thing of all the eminent speakers. So you can ask questions later on also. But little bit we have to adjust with when ministers are coming. If at all they come, because he has promised us he will come and he will come also. Right? Do you have any idea? So, madam, uh, you please continue, but uh, three more speakers yeah, are there. Uh, to all of you, I am just, minutes. so uh, we'll, huh? this is my humble request. Let me just take time. five minutes now. Thank you, thank yeah. you, madam. Sorry. Thank for you. Thanks a lot. So, this is something, is another uh, one, why we need to look into livelihood concerns in conservation realities, yeah. So, this is also, this is uh, of, uh, huh, what had happened, I'll just tell you the story, basically. You can see this one. Uh, without taking this Valley of Flower National Park and Nanda Devi National Park. These two, uh, I had gone there as a director of the park and I had to manage these two national parks and two national parks. But at the same time, now this, both these national parks have different, uh, you know, uh, conservation conflict. Nanda Devi National Park, there was, you know, there was 20 years of rife between park and public because of the, uh, you know, uh, strict conservation regime, yeah. And this Valley of Flower National Park, there was laxity in the conservation because, uh, you know, law, that Hemkund Sahib is the same way where you go to Valley of Flower and Hemkund Sahib. So it was really, uh, 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 you know, lot of garbage had been deposited there. So, you know, how people were engaged to sustain this project, I am just going to tell, basically. And it is sustaining till now. So, because we had involved people in 2004-05. So, this is how, uh, uh, yeah, I am not going, this is different maps. 
So this I already told that people were on rife from 83 to 2003 uh, for this uh, Nanda Devi National Park because it was stopped from mountaineering activity then uh, people were wheeled away of the livelihood opportunities. And Valley of Flower National Park 4 to 6 lakh pilgrim in 5 point in 19 kilometer route in uh, this Hemkun Sahib and the bioresources were very highly depleted. Vi Valley of Flower National Park had the potential of becoming world heritage site but no management on the ground to affect this. Especially international visitors went with a very bad note about the valley. So given that I am not going to do all this part, NDBR part. Now uh, we, what we did was that this is whole biosphere reserve. I am just uh, telling about only the two park basically. Now what we did was that, that we negotiated with the people to open up the, this uh, uh, value, of, uh, this Nanda Devi National Park up to uh, 10 kilometers uh, from uh, 10 kilometers where they could see the park, beautiful park, bowl safe park inside. So 500 visitors were allowed. But at the same time, you know, it took a lot of time to talk with the people. Earlier, they were porters and guides 20 years back. But to make them as destination developers, lot of, you know, mindset change, lot of capacity building had to go. So that's why I'm telling we have to be on with the people on the ground. Then only we'll be able to understand. And some, some four villages, one village was telling that we will be, you know, handling the whole mountaineering activity. Then we had to develop a special, you know, mountaineering circuit in that one. How, you know, every village get equal opportunity to uh, get access to this uh, tourism activities. Now in Valley of Flower National Park, so here also we use Sramdan and we told villagers that there were 400, uh, you know, shops in that 19 kilometers route, but without, uh, you know, lot of garbage. And uh, now we, uh, 76 family, we talk with them, we tell them you will have only one shop per village now. And at the same time now, because we, there also we prove them with economic sense. Humne ye bola, abhi tum kya hai na, season mein 10 jaga dukhan dal dete ho, sublet kar dete ho, koi merit sa aya, dilli sa aya, dukhan rakhne de rahe ho. Ab ye dukhan tum khudhi chala ho, aur tum jimedari le lo, yaha ka. So, ये बहुत अच्छा चल जाएगा और तुम प्रॉफिट तो तुम्हारे हाथ में आएगा सब वो देन इकोनॉमिक सेंस देयर आल्सो सो इट्स वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू क्रिएट इकोनॉमिक सेंस इन कंजर्वेशन विद द पीपल नाउ हैड दिस एंड एट द सेम टाइम देयर जिला परिषद यूज्ड टू टेक टैक्स व्हिच वाज इलीगल सो व्हेन वी सो ऑल दिस व्हेन वी यू नो डेवलप व्हेन वी एंड वी अगेन देयर वाज इको फी अंशदान you know, for keeping shop, can you, depending on the size of the shop, keep, you know, pay 1500 rupees and 2500 rupees per year. So they agreed. So given all those, so this is what it shows that, you know, eco fee, uh, eco fee they collected. At the same time, what happened was they, when they, you know, we, uh, using Sramdan, we collected about 50 tons of garbage there. And at the same time, now, you know, it was very difficult to uh, 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 sell that garbage. I'll tell a, a story in very brief, basically. And what happened was that ultimately a buyer from Delhi was ready, but he told that you bring that money, that, you know, 50 tons of garbage to Dehradun, I'll pay three, sorry, 30,000 rupees only. But the carting from that place, about 270 uh, kilometer till Dehradun, it cost us 98,000 rupees. This is the environment cost we are paying. So we didn't leave at that. We brought all the garbage to Dehradun. We sorted the garbage, did po post-consumer analysis of plastic waste, and shown to the government that you know one one to manage one kg of garbage, it's costing 53 rupees per kg. Government understood took immediate action, lot of policies followed, government invested in installing plastic densification plant in the, in the de destination where my 15 kg plastic could become only half a truck. So there are also economic sense principles. What happens is that if the cost is coming down, if I have plastic densification plant in the destination, 
So, you know, much of the economy trickled down to rack pickers because, they, because of the lesser overhead cost. So, that way it will galvanize the economy of rack picking there only. So, this is very, very important for us to understand, you know, when we work with the people and, you know, do our work basically. So, this is something like, you know, the sustainability aspect I am just ex explaining. Then, uh, uh, you know, after having all that, we seeing no fund, we uh, went to the government and told that, you know, if uh, that Gora Khachar takes 200 rupees to go from Govind Ghat to Hemkund, the 20 rupees which Jilla Parishad was taking, if it's giving to the, given to the Eco Development Committee, which is managing everything, government agreed, issued one geo. Then we, you know, then you know, in the first year itself, they collected fund to the tune of, uh, you can see, uh, 9.8 lakh rupees and uh, plus whatever community had contributed is 10.42 lakh rupees. So, this is how now they have been, you know, I do not have uh, after 20, but I have got, but I could not get uh, time uh, to, you know, put this one, uh, but still there. Now, uh, learning from the process change with local stakeholder. So, I have already told I am not going to, you can see the, I am just taking you the file photos. This is how we mobilize the community. You can see Maila Mangal Dal yeah, in the fourth slide in 2003 cl cleaning campaign. This was me and people are listening, you know, we have to be, be on with them. So, this is how the people are taking their after, we can, Hemkun was full of garbage, yeah. This 50 ton, this is one, one cement bag, you can see, yeah. This is, this is being taken to Dehradun, 15 truckloads. So, this is how the local people have been engaged to, you know, get the uh, nature tourism organized, building their capacity. Yeah, na? So, people in Ghagaria, they, they, uh, kya, na? they remain idle through tourists. Now, their slideshows are going on, people take money from that. So, this is how we analyze the plastic waste to, to, you know, to show to the government basically. So, research work also had to go on and on as I told. With this support, uh, uh, then we developed the guideline for mountaineering. Uh, the Uttarakhand is only one state which has developed a very concrete guideline, uh, this environmental guideline for mountaineering. So, yeah, this is uh, how this whole garbage dump was, you know, converted into a world heritage site, the Valley of Flowers National Park, yeah. So, this is how the local effect from local to global basically. So, this UNESCO recognized and to, in 2005, they gave world heritage status to Valley of Flowers National Park. So, everything is related. People, the stakeholder from local to go global, they now recognize, you know, environmental impact. So, this is very important. So, uh, I am not going to going much now. Lot of uh, innovation, I, uh, we could get lot of, uh, you know, support from the government to experiment effective program convergence, best practices were documented very thoroughly for immediate follow-up and policy support. Policy research work of high quality went hand in hand with innovative community involvement strategy. That's how we could uh, do all these basically. Thank you very much. So, my purpose was just to show, you know, how policy, how the community dynamic works in the, in the environmental, you know, to, if we are, are to, handle environment in a cost effective manner and sustain it that is more important it's only community it's only localization they can sustain we cannot sustain so we have to pay attention to that thank you thank you madam